Now it's time for Culture Talk, where we talk about culturally relevant topics that you can use to start conversations about your faith. And I'm joined today with astrophysicist Hugh Ross. Thank you for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. We're going to be talking about your new book, Design to the Core. Super cool cover, nice and shiny. Well, our editorial team designed that, so hey. thank you for the editorial team. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I love this book. I, I not only love the cover, but the contents in it. You take readers on this journey through the cosmos, and you use, you know, a lot of big words. I, I think some people will be very um, surprised to know that things like um, large-scale cosmic structures and the Earth's crustal interior, that all of those point to fine-tuning and to think that we can look through the cosmos and find something that points to a reason for us to be here, I think is pretty spectacular. And you've done such a good job in unpacking that in this book. Um, can you walk us through a couple of those features um, specifically? And this is a big one. It's a head scratcher for me. I'm not even sure I'm going to say it right. Lani Akea supercluster. It's a That's supercluster. Well, it's a supercluster. And, and can you say it? Yeah, supercluster. No, not that one. <laughs> Very funny. Lanikea. <laughs> Lanikea? Yeah. So it's a Hawaiian word. Yeah. So, so that supercluster, how does that point to a designer? Well, it's a new word. It didn't exist in the English language mm -hmm. until they actually figured out what a supercluster is. Mm -hmm. It's a cluster of clusters of galaxies. Okay. And basically, they define it as a grouping of clusters and groups of galaxies that are gravitationally connected. So uh, they're basically falling into a common center. Mm -hmm. Now, that's assuming you take out the expansion of the universe. What's unusual about our Lanakaya supercluster, it's actually dispersing. Hmm. But they define it by saying, okay, what are the velocities of galaxies if we take out the general expansion of the universe? But that's unique uh, to our super galaxy cluster. The ones that we see elsewhere in the universe are gravitationally stable. In other words, they're very dense uh, groupings of huge galaxy clusters. And when you look at them through the telescope, they look like basketball mm -hmm. or football type structures. So you see all these galaxy clusters densely packed together. Dangerous place for advanced life because you're going to have some really big supermassive black holes mm. pouring out deadly radiation. The galaxies and stars are going to be way too close together. You're going to have gravitational disturbances uh, throughout that system. What's unique to our super galaxy cluster, it doesn't look like a basketball or a football with dense clusters packed mm -hmm. together. Rather, it looks more like a, a praying mantis insect. Hmm. You ever looked at those spindly? Things? Yeah. <laughs> and so. You see these small galaxy clusters. There's mm -hmm. a couple of big ones in the Lanakaya Super Galaxy Cluster, mm -hmm. the Virgo Cluster, for example. Uh, but most of them are small galaxy groups strung along these long filaments. And that's a unique feature. Mm -hmm. And like our local group of galaxies, is at the nexus of three subfilaments. And so we see these galaxies and gal galaxy clusters and galaxy groups strung on along these very long lines. But that means that you can have a grouping of galaxies with a galaxy inside of it where it's not going to be gravitationally disturbed, mm. uh, where it's not going to be exposed to deadly radiation from these really big supermassive black holes. And yet it's going to have enough tiny dwarf galaxies in its vicinity mm -hmm. that the galaxy in which you have advanced life can consume these tiny dwarf galaxies because that's critical to sustain the spiral structure of the galaxy. You need a stable, symmetrical spiral structure mm -hmm. for advanced light to be possible. And Sandra, there's tens of thousands of these super galaxy clusters in the universe, mm. but ours is the only one that has the features that would permit the existence of advanced life. Yeah. All the others we look at are radically different uh, from our super galaxy cluster. I love that. I love that you're explaining you know, kind of as we're going through this journey through the cosmos, we're seeing all of these other galaxies and super clusters and clusters that are showing, nope, nope, we can't have life here, 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 but here we can. And so that's helping, I think, I hope the, the lay reader to understand that when you start to look at 
far out into the cosmos, you can see all of these places that are beautiful, but we can't have advanced well, that's life another there. another part of it. There's mm -hmm. beauty everywhere yeah. you look. And so, you know, why is it so beautiful? Mm -hmm. It's like, it shows the personality of the mm -hmm. Creator. And He put within us human beings the capacity to appreciate beauty. And the heavens really do declare the glory of God. Not just the stars in our Milky Way galaxy, but the galaxies beyond, mm -hmm. the galaxy clusters beyond, the super galaxy clusters, the cosmic web. And the book really starts with the universe as a whole. Because mm -hmm. there's over 50 books in my office <laughs> written by mainly unbelievers mm -hmm. who talk about this amazing design of the universe. But they're looking at the universe as a whole, which allows them to keep the Creator at an arm's length. Mm. What I do in this book is say, Let's start there, but then let's move gradually step by step towards planet Earth. Mm -hmm. And you see that the level of fine-tuned design gets greater and greater and greater. And it's of all cosmic size scales, yeah. not just one or two. Yeah, well, you start large at the large scale cosmic structures, then you go all the way down. And I love this idea of zooming in. So you zoom in now to Earth's interior. So we've right. traveled light years to now get to Earth's interior, and what is so fine-tuned about our planet's interior? Well, the sun's interior is fine-tuned, the moon's interior is fine-tuned, the Earth's interior is fine-tuned. The Earth is where we see the most spectacular uh, interior designs. Mm. The fact that it has a solid iron core, a liquid iron core beyond that, a couple of mantle layers beyond that and the crust. And I think what you're referring to mm -hmm. is the incredible design of what's called the asthenosphere. Oh, I was totally referring to that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a very thin layer between the outer crust of the Earth mm -hmm. and the outermost part of the mantle of the Earth. But this is where you have what's called the deep water cycle operating, mm -hmm. the deep carbon dioxide cycle operating, uh, you know, the deep water, deep oxygen, and how all of these cycles have to be fine-tuned at different rates throughout the history of the Earth. And it takes this incredible uh, relationship between the solid core, the inner core, the uh, inner mantle, the outer mantle, the asthenosphere, and the crust of the Earth mm. to ensure that we're getting these cycles operating at highly fine-tuned levels throughout Earth's history. And if that weren't the case, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Yeah. We wouldn't even exist. You know, it reminds me of something that one of our uh, friends, a, a science teacher, Mark Ritter, used to say to his students that, it, you know, you adjust anything one way or, or another, and what happens? The students say, we all die. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny, but it, it's such an interesting thing to learn that it is so finely tuned that we tweak things a little bit and advanced and life can't exist. what this book talks about, there's mm -hmm. over 2,000 things that where you run into that. Wow fine-tune them ever so slightly, we all die. Right. But what well, I really love is it's all fine-tuned, mm -hmm. not just so that we can exist, but so that billions of us on one planet can be redeemed from our sin and evil. Mm. That's where you see the most astounding fine-tuning. Well, there is a lot in this book, and I am excited for our readers to finally get their hands on it because it's available now broadly, where pretty much wherever people can buy books. Um, so I'm very excited. Thank you so much for just coming in and talking about your book. If you want to get this book designed to the core, go to support.reasons.org.